Hi and welcome back to my channel. So today I want to talk about the LDX Rally. Uh, I want to give you an overview of what it is and how I did. I think this is going to be a two-part series. So the first one will be explaining more of what the rally is and how I approached it. And then the second half will be the route I took, why I did what I did, and how I scored. So if you want to learn more about that, stick around. Dang, this looks like a cliff. I mean, this looks like a, this is a cliff. All right, I can do it. I can do it. Hang on, let me figure out which way we go. I think we stay, sh I don't know. Yeah, no big deal. It used to be called the Iron Butt Light. It's run in the same sort of fashion and kind of the same requirements. And I have been selected and I'm participating in a 2023 Iron Butt. So with that, I wanted to see how well I did. And to be honest, I put a lot of pressure on myself as far as if I couldn't ride the seven day rally, be competitive and feel good about how I ended up, there's really no reason to be trying an 11 day rally. So I was a little bit late to the party by that. What I mean is registration was already closed and I did reach out to Paul Tong, the rally master, expressed my true interest. Uh, we had a couple phone calls and he let me sign up. So immediately upon signing up, he sent me a link to the hotels. Now, what I knew was we started and ended in Cheyenne, Wyoming on Saturday morning. We had a checkpoint in State College, Pennsylvania on Tuesday. And that's all we know. So the, the, the host hotel in Cheyenne, Wyoming, uh, no problem. I, I made my hotel reservation. That was fine. I had to be there Friday for, uh, they call it an odometer check. And I wasn't sure what all that was about. And then we would return. Uh, the hotel in State College, Pennsylvania was booked. So I had to book a hotel just a little ways down the street. So not a big deal. So I was, I was all set. Now my prep for this rally was about the same as any big ride. Change of oil, reach the drive shaft, all those things, go over the bike, and plan for seven days on the bike. Uh, one issue that I seem like I've had lately is tire wear. Uh, tires have been uh, just, don't, I don't seem to be getting the miles on them. I, I, I don't understand. I've always been a fan of Anarchy's, uh, Adventures, uh, just haven't gotten the miles out of the, the first set on this bike. 7,000 miles and then they were smoked. So with that being said, I was led to Dunlop Trail Max Missions. And those are the tires and I mounted them the day before I left. With unknowns on tire wear and then oil changes and things like that, I decided to trail her to the start. Uh, I'm not the only guy that did that. Don't hate the player, man, hate the game. So I decided I needed to be there Friday uh, through the registration process, you pick a time for your odometer check. Mine was Friday at noon, so I wanted to be there Thursday evening so I didn't have to rush around Friday morning. I also didn't want to ride up there a thousand miles, uh, end up with a nail on my tire and have to deal with that Friday, so I trailed. Instead of leaving early Thursday, it ended up being I plan to leave late Wednesday. Uh, it's hot in Texas and I could drive through the night where it's a lot cooler. And that ended up being Wednesday afternoon. So <clears throat> I rolled out and took a nice leisurely stroll to Cheyenne, Wyoming. Got there fairly early on Thursday, hung out. There was already a, a few riders there, bikes in the parking lot. And we all kind of congregated at different times in the lobby and, and hung out. Not much going on on Thursday. Friday comes. <clears throat> now at this point we don't know the theme, we don't know the start times, we don't know much of anything. So Friday comes, I get up kind of leisurely and I'm hearing about this odometer check and, and, and I kind of lightheartedly ask, you know, is this something I can do in shorts? What, what am I doing? You know, what, what really are we doing? 
And then I found out it was a 47 mile odometer check. Okay, can't do that in shorts. So I put my riding gear on uh, about 11 o'clock. I'm, I'm kind of getting ready. And at the last minute, I decided to, to mount my GPS's. I, I didn't even have those on the bike. They were upstairs in the room for planning purposes. So the last minute I put those on, uh, there's a photographer, photographer named Toby. He came along and said, have you done your donor check yet? I said, no. He said, go ahead. They're, they're taking people early. There was a storm coming and they were trying to get done early. So <clears throat> again, uh, I feel like I know what I'm doing on, on rallies. I, I, I had a good plan mentally and I understand the game, so to speak. I come around to the checkpoint. <clears throat> Uh, they have a group of volunteers underneath the awning of the hotel uh, and I pull up and young lady comes out, greets me and says, I'm, I'm here for my odometer check. She gets my name, my rider number and first thing she says is, I need you to turn around like I'm going the wrong way. Oh, so I just turn around, stop at this very specific kind of line. And she says, now this is where it goes bad. <clears throat> I uh, need your odometer. Easy enough, I scroll through that. And she said, please clear one of the trip meters in your GPS. Trip meter in a GPS. Uh, I'm pretty good with a NAV6. Uh, I, I know how to manipulate that thing and set it up and run through it. I got nothing. I got nothing. I, I, I can't respond to her. I'm, I'm just looking at her with that deer in the headlight look, and she's looking at me, and it feels like it was for hours. So finally she says, Jeff. I'm like, oh great, Jeff is another one of the helpers. He comes over, and I, again, I can't even talk. I'm so freaking nervous, I can't even talk. She says, can you help him with the trip meter and his GPS? So he just reaches over and starts hacking away. And I'm sitting on my bike. I have no idea what's going on. And I can see what they're thinking. This guy's going to go navigate the U.S. for seven days. We'll never see him again. He'll never make it back here. He'll never be at the checkpoint. What is this guy doing? And... After just a couple seconds, he's got it up and he resets it and clear and it's a screen I don't know I've ever seen before. He says, there you go. <clears throat> and and he, did, he was so cool about it. He says, all oh, these are a little different. <clears throat> you get to them differently. Uh, the embarrassment has set in. Thank goodness I got a full face helmet on. Maybe they won't recognize me. Yeah, good luck with that. I told him my name. So he says, okay, you're all set. So. I, I clicked the bike into gear, and then he says, hey, you do know where you're going, right? Oh, man. Yeah, I know where I'm going. So I take off, and I'm telling you, I'm embarrassed. I'm like, what am I doing? I'm about to take off for seven days, and I can't find a trip meter in my GPS. So a hotel is right off I-80. Man, you get on I-80, you basically go 23 and a half miles to an exit, flip around, and come right back. The entire way to the exit, I'm hacking on the other one. I gotta find this trip meter. I gotta find out where he where he got this. It took me the whole way to the exit before I found it. Okay, I feel a little bit better now. At least I know how to find this menu. So I do the odometer check, 47 miles. I get back. They check the odometer, then they check the the mileage on the GPS. She says you're all set. Okay. Still embarrassed, still feel bad for what I did. Around the corner, uh, the, the wind blows pretty hard there all the time, Cheyenne, Wyoming, right? The storm was, was coming in. Uh, I parked my bike uh, beside my car. Uh, everyone covers their bikes and their bikes are, you know, the, the covers are like a wind sail. So I used the, my car as like a shelter to try to protect my bike. One had already blown over in the parking lot and guy broke a mirror. I, I didn't want to be the second. So I get my bike parked, go back upstairs, chained into some comfy clothes. So it's about noon now on Friday. 
uh, our next thing is a four o'clock meeting for uh, the app that you use to score, go over scoring and how the app works. So I go to that four o'clock meeting. Uh, everybody's there, whether they knew how to use the app or not. Everyone's there just in case they put out something. Uh, we cruise through that and that straight into what they called a informal dinner. Now, at this point, we still don't know the theme. We don't know the exact start times. The only thing we know is we have a riders meeting the next morning, Saturday morning at 4.30. So everyone goes to this dinner thinking they're gonna tell us something. In the iron butt world, typically they give you the rally information the night before, so you spend all night planning. Nope. So go through dinner. I made a couple comments to the, the group of folks I was sitting with. I'm going to the riders meeting Dress like this, shorts and flip-flops. I was really looking for confirmation that that was okay, and no one really said anything. So I go to bed not knowing. So the best thing I can do is get a solid night's sleep beforehand, and that didn't work out. I think I got up at uh, 1.30 in the morning, couldn't go back to sleep, so I decided to get up. Uh, pack my clothes. On the ride itself, I took no comfy clothes. I took riding gear, that's it. Uh, I took socks, t-shirts, and underwear, but I didn't take any shorts, I didn't take any shoes, left all that stuff in my car. So at the 4.30 rider meeting, I show up in my climb riding pants and riding boots. There was a couple of us there, but the majority, and I think there was about 70, I, th I think was a number, there was about 70 of us. Everyone's in, in casual clothes. Okay, mistake on my part. Not a big deal. We go through the theme, which is our founding fathers, and goes through some of the scoring, how the points are gonna work, and specific times. The specific time was we had a 12 o'clock departure. It's 4.30, so we got a lot of time to plan, which I thought was great. So we had to be in the little staging area at 11.30. So riders meeting was about an hour long. Go back to my hotel room, we'll just say it's six. Uh, I ran through a couple scenarios and I'm, I'm gonna try to show you the best what route I chose and, and where I went. And about eight o'clock, I decided to go have some breakfast, take a break from looking at this so i went downstairs again i've already packed my casual clothes so i'm in riding gear uh have some breakfast come back to my room maybe an hour later i had solidified my my route and upload them into my gps's my first leg route was going to be about 3900 miles so felt pretty good about that and at about 11, I was at my bike, everything was loaded, uh, checked out of my hotel, and, and I went around the corner. Uh, I was on the opposite side of the hotel to the staging. Uh, we kind of hung out and socialized. They started putting put people into staging, and I went into staging. Uh, two rows of bikes, bike, 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 ducks in a row, right? At about uh, 11.40, uh, local police showed up to escort us out to the interstate and we had a short little riders meeting the rally master Paul Tong said at five minutes he'll give us a warning you need to be headed your bike and, and ready to go at two minutes you need to be on your bike with it running and ready to go okay so we are one block, we're, we're right beside I-80. So we're gonna exit our parking lot, make a left, go to a light, make a left, and boom, you're at I-80. So I'm a center stand guy. By that, what I mean is when I park, I always put my bike on the center stand. Uh, when I mount my bike, I get up on it, situate it myself, start it, I can rock it forward, roll off the center stand, and, and, and head on out. The nerves are, are building. Anxiety's building. I'm doubting my ride already. And I decide that's that's not a good idea. There's iron butt rally finishers all over the place. There's one right beside me. There's another one in front. I, I can just picture myself coming off the center stand. 
the bike stalls, I fall over, I just gonna be hectic. So now I get back off my bike and I'm trying to pull it off the center stand without rolling forward and hitting the guy in front of me. It's, it's just horrible already. I'm surrounded by people. I, I'm so uncomfortable and nervous. I, man, if you're a rookie, just go to the back. I, 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 I wanted the bike not to start so I can just sit off the side and figure this out. But no, the bike starts and here we go. Now you need to understand there's probably 25, 30 bikes in front of me. That There's a bunch. I'm not at the front. I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle of this thing. The police are escorting us out. They point at us, one, 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 one. I take off, I'm rolling, okay, here we go. We make a left out of our parking lot, and then we make uh, the next left, and the police are blocking the intersections, and we're headed to I-80. Every single bike was going west. I'm the only guy in the lane to go east. So immediately I'm thinking, I'm wrong. What did I do wrong? Why, why am I not going that way? Am I not? Am I supposed to go that way? It's horrible. I enter the on-ramp for I-80. I got the clutch in. I'm going like seven miles an hour. This is horrible. I just want to pull over and get sick. So there's nobody. For, everyone's going west. Oh my gosh, the pressure, the nauseous. I just unreal. So. There's a car behind me, I gotta start speeding up. So I'm on I-80 now, I'm doing like 60, speeding them, it's like a, like 80. Uh, finally I see a bike. Okay, then I see two. Okay, so I speed up, I set my cruise, and I'm riding. A couple bikes, all right, okay, I'll be okay. Then I realize the 47 mile odometer check that we did, I never filled up. Okay, not that big a deal. Once I'm going, I'll be fine. So, uh, one or two guys kind of passed me, and, and I had a couple hundred miles to go before my first checkpoint. Uh, just rules to the rookie. Uh, man, get in the back, let everyone go, then take off. Uh, the pressure I put on myself was just ridiculous, right? Just all my fault. Uh, the staff is really good, they would tell you anything but I should know better, right? But I did. Okay, so that's kind of the end of that segment of it. And from there, I'll go into the routing for each one of them. Uh, again, I, I hope this gives you a better understanding of what the LDX rally is about and what rally riding itself is all about. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell so you're notified next time a video comes out. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.